The project is run by two dozen students from Asia, Europe, and the Arab world. An almost fully automatic program combs the internet in search of militant leaders and their followers. It tries to identify anonymous authors using text criteria such as word length, punctuation, syntax, and content to create a profile almost as unique as a human fingerprint. The software provides a graphic representation of the results known as a right print. Here, the profile on the upper left of the screen fits the anonymous internet entries on the bottom right. This is the right print of a young man from a chat forum. The results show that he is unsure of himself and is seeking advice on a number of issues. The answers are much clearer. The content revolves around the same topic, religion. Key words are highlighted by the software. Another author glorifies violence. His choice of themes is so specific that he's deemed dangerous. The software can also recognize that he's an opinion leader at the center of the network. The computer is capable of establishing levels of importance among chat forum users, how dangerous they are, and with whom they are in contact. Right now, we have expanded to about 20 to 30,000 features that we can identify. So it's actually very difficult for you to disguise in a way that I cannot extract your features. But even if you know some of the features, you want to change your style, when you took a huge effort to change your style to the point that the computer cannot recognize you, then you are a different person. If you become a different person, you don't use violent term anymore, you don't use racist term, you don't use pet, then you will not be able to attract your original audience. We have changed you for good, hopefully. <laughs> The project has made the University of Tucson a sought-after address for Western intelligence agencies. Some of them are already helping to fund the project, but the researchers aren't saying who they are. Civil rights advocates warn that current measures to fight Internet crime are infringing on freedom of speech and individual privacy. And now European politicians say the names of innocent citizens are appearing on police blacklists. The German sociologist in our next report says he's done nothing to deserve the nightmare he was subjected to, all because, he says, of an article he published. For the past 12 months, German federal police have been watching every move Andre Holm and his girlfriend have made. They suspect Holm may be a member of a radical left-wing terror cell. All his telephone conversations are tapped. His mobile phone gives investigators his exact position every... It's clear that police are interested in every trivial aspect of his life. Every single minute of my life is noted. If I'm leaving the house with one of my kids or coming back with them, I have to ask myself what all this has to do with solving crimes. Holm is a sociologist at Humboldt University in Berlin. His published material deals with concepts like gentrification or the slide into poverty and describes the ever-increasing gap between rich and poor. These are everyday topics for a sociologist, but they recurred in a letter from a radical left-wing group claiming responsibility for arson attacks on police vehicles alongside their justification. A suspected member of the group was arrested in July. Holm allegedly spoke to him on two occasions. The German Criminal Investigation Bureau alleged that he'd been involved in a terrorist plot and a police task force was on to him. They hammered on the door and threw me to the floor. Armed men with guns secured all the rooms, like in the movies. I was first taken in a car, handcuffed, then by helicopter, to Karlsruhe. The prison doors closed behind me. There was no window in the cell. I thought to myself, this is serious. This is for real. He was in jail for three weeks in solitary confinement. He was allowed out in the yard for one hour a day. His children didn't know where their father was. Back at home, the surveillance continued. Agents sometimes make mistakes that cause the telephone to play up. Every internet site that Holmes' girlfriend visits is registered. They've lost all their privacy. It's a really unpleasant feeling to think there's a camera fixed on you. As soon as you open the front door, you know there's someone watching your every move. Holm was let out of jail after three weeks. The federal court of justice said his imprisonment was illegal. 
Even so, Holm and his lawyer assume the surveillance is ongoing. The Federal Prosecutor's Office and the Criminal Investigation Bureau have so far declined to deny that assumption. And that's all for our in-depth report. Thanks so much for joining us here at DWTV, and stay with us if you can. <laughs>